know this is going to seem like a different purpose of free speech, but uh, but personally, if I was ever a if I was ever of a country, I would I would I would allow anyone to say um anything anything bad about like the government or anything like that because based on past events or, uh, or like you know history um when people when people have the right to start like you know protesting against the government you know using the the uh, anti-government propaganda and they can rise up hold on uh you cut out did you say you would be against speech against the government or for or uh, neutral. I'm uh, I'm 100. Um, I'm not I'm not, um, and I think and I think that and I don't like the fact that they put some Islamic. Like they aren't like huge, so I'm with it. But uh, but besides that, I'm all for the. Hold on, you cut out. You you said you're all for the what? <clears throat> yeah, your microphone keeps cutting out. Give me a second. Uh, you said you're all for the what? Your microphone keeps on cutting. Yeah, you said you're all for the what? All for the Iran. Yeah, you cut out again. Um, I said here. I'll... Okay, so are you saying that you you would be in favor and you are in favor of Iran suppressing uh, uh, speech against the state? Is that what you're saying? Yes, I'm. Uh, I agree with that because because in my opinion, well, not no. I, I this is the best the Iranian government has, been, and the people who are protesting want to put back the. Sh Okay, so basically, powers to you. so basically your whole reasoning for being against uh, speech against the state is because you believe the current state uh, is just and is doing a good job. This pretty much tends to be the case across the board with people that advocate more authoritarian measures when it comes to freedom of speech. It doesn't really seem to be a consistent standard. W would, why do you think it's efficacious? Like, do you have any data to show that uh, suppression of free speech like broadly correlates with better results politically? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. I the last part. Yeah. So, do you have any? What are the reasons that lead you to believe that suppress that the the state suppressing a uh, speech that's criticism of the state is efficacious? Because um because it's a threat to the state because the people as Iran has um had really two government types. Um, uh, as a as a modern nation, it has it has had a Shah, and I and I think the Shah, um, the Shah was very flawed. Um, he caused he caused like a huge gap in Iran. Yeah, you're not really you're not really answering like the heart of the question. Like, do you have any data to show that uh, suppression of speech correlates with better results in terms of like government structure? Like, do you have any? Show you. How I mean, I can show you how much the GDP rose when yeah, the yeah, but you can't necessarily the, uh, you can't necessarily tie that the GDP rose specifically because of state suppression of speech, right? If we look across the board uh, with governments, uh, pretty much uh, not only in uh, the West but in uh, Latin America, East Asia, it tends to correlate uh, economically speaking. The average citizen tends to do better when the go when the government suppresses and silences speech less less often when there's not uh, an open like epidemic of people that are in jail for uh, being political prisoners. This this isn't really the case. Like the more democratic the government is, uh, tends 
to be across the board correlating with better outcomes for the average citizen. The idea that suppress that the idea of uh, suppressing criticism against the state being better for the people isn't borne out because, like, like let's talk about this realistic, right? Let's say that the state of Iran uh, decided to roll back the the health care program, right? And they wanted to privatize more of it. The the people not being able to speak out against that and not being able to engage in advocacy to change that policy to a more for more uh, nationalization in healthcare, that would be a detriment to a policy that you hold near and dear, right? The right uh, to healthcare. If if you can understand why instances of a policy that you like uh, being held back because the people aren't allowed to speak out against it, can't you understand how this is broadly uh, a problem with more authoritarian measures when it comes to free speech? understand that of course it's just that when the government is the best it's ever been and they want to put it back in a government that makes no logical sense because these people they want to bring back the government that was ruining the country yeah so uh do you have any numbers on uh okay for specifically what specific political group are you referring to um in Iran, they call it the mullahs. Uh, I'm in favor of the mullahs in Iran, rather than the... Rather than the what? Yeah, so you said you'd, you'd be in favor of the what? Mullahs. Yes. If you couldn't hear me, I'll type it up. Yeah, so sort of uh, the argument you're making, right, is that if the state doesn't suppress free speech, then the group that you don't like will gain more power to change the country. Um, let's, let's take it out of our brand for a second, right? Let's look across the world. Can you name an example uh, of a time, like let's say in Europe or the U.S., where freedom of speech directly correlated with a policy that y you would say is bad? Uh, yeah, so, um, so in Germany, the Weimar Republic, um, freedom of speech for, and freedom of um, for the for the different German political parties, caused more people to lean towards the Nazis. And Hold on, free speech is not what led to Nazis a rise came in, to power. Free speech is not what led to a rise in, in Nazism. No, no, actually, uh, if you want to talk about the direct the Nazism rising, no, 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 there was a there was a material uh, correlation across the board in Europe. Uh, and in America with rise in both socialist and fascist uh, tendencies after the Great Depression, which materially uh, and even more so affected Germany economically because they were being affected of the Treaty of Versailles that led to the material conditions for not only all of Europe, but specifically Germany to either go towards fascism or socialism, specifically because of the antagonisms inherent to capitalism after like severe uh, market failure. So... Uh, the Nazis specifically used uh, used socialist sentiment so they could get forward their fascist corporate corporatist uh, government so that they could latch onto socialist tendencies uh, amongst the populace. The more democratic approach would have been uh, either the Social Democratic Party or the Communist Party uh, winning. You know, if you look at like the case in Germany, you can't say that it's the cause of free speech because we have two specific historical incidences that we know specifically no. correlated to the rise in neo-Nazism. Yeah, Nazism, not neo-Nazism. Sorry. No, of course. Never said it was all of freedom of speech's fault. But don't you think that uh, if, you know, don't you think if there was no, like, freedom of speech against the government and you have all these political parties that are against the government, don't you think um, the Nazis would have been shut down 
No, no, I, I don't think that at all. Because if we look at the case in uh, the U.S. specifically, which still did uh, some sort of suppression of free speech, but it was a lot less uh, blatant than, like, what, say, like, Iran would be able to do. Uh, and it didn't lead to... There actually were uh, attempts at... Uh, even some corporate-backed attempts at getting fascism in the U.S. at the time after the Great Depression. But that wasn't the case. The, when we had a more... Uh, democratic government structure and less suppression on free speech we moved more toward, toward social democracy which includes policies that you uh, seem to be very in favor of and if we look at the case across the board right when it comes to advocacy of socially democratic policies right like healthcare, education etc um, across the board they tend to be very popular amongst the american people even if you look at the the republican party specifically uh I believe I've looked at a poll, and it was over 50% of Republicans supported Medicare for All. So if you look at the case with governments that tend to suppress free speech less, we tend to get more socially democratic policies because they tend to be popular for most people because most people across the world tend to be working class, so they tend to vote in their own interests. And we see uh, when we get less democratic governments, we tend away from that, like specifically in Nazi Germany. Because they because they suppressed free speech— uh, and they didn't allow political assent because of that. They were able to do a lot more privatization in Nazi Germany specifically, and in fascist Italy. It was the case in both of those instances. The, the uh, suppression of free speech and political dissent directly correlates with a decrease in social democratic policies that y you said uh, earlier that you're very much in favor of. Okay, so I think I think my problem here to because I tried to tie like Iran suppression of freedom of speech to other countries, I think that that's my wrong there. Freedom do you think, Here's my question. Do you know do you know about the Shah and the Supreme Leader? Do you know about that? No, I'm pretty uneducated, but could you just give me like because when it comes to like broader policies, like like how authoritarian a government is and how much it restricts free speech, it makes way more sense to look at a broader both historical picture and global picture when assessing how these government structures affect policy and prescriptive statements. It makes way more sense to look at that on a global scale than it does one specific country that has, like especially like Iran, right, which has very much been affected by... Uh, geopolitical powers from like western uh, imperialism and overall being affected by uh, the climate uh, that the u.s has impacted on the middle east as a whole it makes way less uh, sense to look at that one country specifically when we're talking about like the prescriptive policy prescriptions to limits on free speech and what that has to do like largely with policy effect you know like oh actually actually though uh, let, let can i give a specific example of a, a problem in Iran that would be related to, to free speech? Um, uh, so... Hmm. To Iran related to freedom of speech? Yeah, so over, across the board when it comes to Iran, they tend to be very socially conservative because of, because of the nature of theocracy. And if we look at socially uh, conservative policies across the board, uh, in in like liberal governments and fascist governments, they correlate with uh, with lower standards of living for the people that have those policies subjected on them, right? So if we look at like the suppression of uh, of like homosexuals and women across the board, when we look at uh, countries that have uh, more rights for women and more female representation across the board, the stand the average standards of living dramatically increase, right? When we look at states that have uh, higher trans acceptance, higher gay acceptance, across the board they have higher standards of living for the average citizen and lower suicide rates uh, for uh, queer people. So w when it comes to socially conservative policies, it's directly correlated with a theocratic government that's anti-free speech where you can't even get the policies changed in the first place to get the progress. And it seems to be across the board the case that socially conservative policies deteriorate the country and cause it to degenerate. So specifically in Iran, if we're talking about theo theocratic uh, type suppression, we can across the board see that this is detrimental not only to the average person, but to the specific groups that these policies disproportionately affect. You were saying? Uh, did, did you hear the last thing I said?
Yes. Uh, you were saying something, and then uh, it just cut off mid sent. Oh, what was the what was the last thing I said? So, so I did... uh, you were mm -hmm. talking about you were, you were talking about a free mm -hmm. to give you an example of uh, you know um, of how freedom of speech could be a bad thing in Iran, and then and you were saying something, so I didn't. Yeah, so I was saying that across the board, when we look at socially conservative policies, which are pretty much across the board the case with theocracies and countries that have high suppressions of free speech, uh, because the people can't speak out against them and they can't get these policies changed, the average standards of living, not only for the average member of the working class, but for the, the members of the groups that those policies disproportionately affect, right? Like when it comes to like gay rights or women's rights, it across the board leads to lower uh, standards of living. We see this across the board. Well, uh, in Iran, the GDP per person and the uh, and the standards of living, uh, it actually it actually in yeah. So when it comes to the whole gay rights, mm -hmm. okay. So so first I need to address the GDP thing. Then we so need one, to, I need to address the GDP thing, and then we can get to the gay rights, right? So. Uh, I would need you to draw me a specific correlation between socially conservative policy in Iran and the GDP. Can you do that for me? Um. Well, what do you mean? Like, just find a graph on that? What, what are you talking no, about? No, I, I don't mean a graph. Can you draw me a line, like, data that you have that indicates that these, social, that these socially conservative policies correlate with the GDP specifically in Iran? Because across the board, that's not the case. So can you give can you draw a line between socially conservative policies being maintained in Iran and the increase in GDP? Uh, I mean that says socially conservative policies and how they uh, made the economy greater. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you draw the line? Yeah, I'll try to find that for you one second. So for the people, uh, if anyone's going to jump in chat, I'll just entertain while he's looking for the data. Beepity boop, schmopity whoop, doopity boop, doopity boop. Hey, what's the name of that song? It's really good. <laughs> no, I, well, I just made it up. <laughs> yeah. What's the name of that song? It's really good. Are you doing a meme? It's just uh, something I made up. <laughs> Second, uh... Like how socially, how, how the socially conservative uh, government affected the economy. Yeah, this was you... pretty much. A... Mm -hmm. I know it's a little bit blurry, but one second, let me just give you the. Yeah, so this doesn't really give anything I described. So since you can't give like a a data based like correlation with socially conservative policy and an increase in GDP, let's talk uh, globally. So you brought up gay rights. So let's go into that specifically. What are your positions on that? I, I think I think gay rights should be uh, um, established in all countries, but at the same time, um, uh, the majority democracy kind of majority of people elected this um this government type the uh, ayatollah it's everyone knew that uh, gay people would have uh would have less rights so 
So everyone are with it. So the so so they in a weird way they kind of voted for that. The majority of the people. Wait, was there a was there a vote on a reduction in gay rights? Was it like a? There wasn't, but everyone knew because this yeah, was a concert. Yeah, but this, this was, was also the case. Islamic this was also the case in what you're literally arguing for right now is you're saying that it's a democratic decision, which you already pretty much announced that you disagree with democracy. So if we talk about like n- citizens knowing that there's going to be a suppression. When did I say that? What? I said that I, the only time I mentioned democracy. See, no, no. The only time no, I mentioned democracy is you said saying you that you... theocracy and suppression of free speech yes. uh, and po- and suppression of political dissent. That's that's inherently anti-democracy. It's antithetical to democracy. So specifically on gay rights, um, an authoritarian government and the citizens knowing or being more okay that there's going to be more suppression of gay rights or more rollbacks or more you know discrimination or that sort of thing. Across the board, when we look at more authoritarian structures, that that just seems to be the case. That even though it's not a democratic a d- democratic structure, the average citizen seems to be more okay with it because people uh, just tend to tend to change their views based on like the material conditions that the state and the economy present them with. So, in the case of Nazi Germany, uh, in the case of fascist Italy, both when they heavily suppressed homosexuality, the average citizen seemed to be more okay with it than they would. In the U.S., even though they were very much okay with it at the time, simply because uh, that was just the environment they grew up in, and that's what they accepted. So you can't really say that it's the case that this is because of democracy, because they're living under an authoritarian structure that incentivizes homophobia. So if we look at like the U.S. specifically, so we can look at how a society democratically changed a lot of uh, gay acceptance through political dissent. What we've what we've done since then is dramatically decreased uh, the gay suicide rates, and also uh, since gay people are more uh, economically disenfranchised through du- through due to uh, systemic discrimination that we can substantiate with data. And there are still some states that, uh, well, actually, we just got recently got a uh, got gay rights uh, uh, discrimination protections in the workplace uh, universalized for the nation, which that's great. But if we look at more uh, economically disenfranchised populations across the world, like gay people specifically, allowing more acceptance and more and more uh, gay rights boosts uh, their economic output because they're more uh, they're more able to meaningfully engage in the economy. And when we have workers that are more able to meaningfully engage in the economy, they end up making more money. When workers have more money, it's better for the economy because they, they have more money to spend on commodity goods. This is also the case with women, right? Like if we look at Scandinavia, where they have the most representation of women in uh, government structures, where women have the most financial power, that across the board correlates not only with economic growth, but uh, greater growth for uh, commodity production because people, women and gay people, have more money to spend on com- to spend on commodity production, which is overall a net benefit for the GDP across the board. That's that's not even arguable. Okay, so I understand. Just that on. This, I guess, I, I, I've seen it myself, and uh, my entire family has seen it. And this graph shows, if you just look at the timeline, happened in 1979, and you can see that it went down, and then it skyrocketed because uh, down. Yeah, so I would take this as a serious concern if you were able to draw like a line with data that made you able to like infer that these socially conservative policies in this case of Iran specifically led to an increase in GDP. But, but since you can't do that, and when we look across the board uh, with the world and with data that we can materially measure an increase in GDP and uh, commodity production in relation to not only freedom of speech but less socially conservative policies and more equality for like women and gay people specifically, I- I'm just going to dismiss this because this is an evidence that uh, socially conservative conservative policies correlate with economic growth 
And since you can't draw a line with data to show that this is why the GDP rose, I'm going to have to assume it's other material conditions since all of the other data shows that there is a negative correlation with suppression of uh, gay people and overall social conservative policies and economic growth. So I, I don't see this as a substantiated argument whatsoever. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I never, but I don't think I ever said that. Um, I never said that the GDP rose and um and homosexuals. But yeah. what I was rather saying is that. Yeah, what you said was I brought up uh, social conservatism and economic conditions, and you said that the GDP rose because of, or that it was an indicator that the GDP rose, that the social conservative policies had a positive economic uh, contribution to the GDP rise. Uh, what I probably meant to say is that um, is that I think Iran's Iran's uh. Iran's GDP utilization of their production and also their and also the how um, they started adding more socialist economy I think that's what rose the GDP yeah but if we look at more socially democratic policies across the board they tend to correlate more with more socially progressive and less socially conservative policies. So I feel like this is a this is a case where you could say that it's not clearly not the social conservatism or the theocracy that is contributing to a GDP growth. So what other uh, can you, so what other like specific policies that do uh, of or when it comes to like suppression of free speech do you think lead to good outcomes? Like let's say uh, just give me a specific uh, policy right that like suppression of leads to positive outcomes. So, so, um, maybe, so maybe I was wrong in that sense, but I definitely think freedom specifically, I think, I think it's done good to keep the government safe because if it, because it will, um, capitalist government who would allow foreign powers to destroy our economy. Wait, Iran is capitalist. I'm sorry. Cut off. Iran is capitalist. Yes, Iran is a capitalist country. They have they have private ownership over the means of production. Yeah, but I said socialist aspects. I'm not saying they're full I'm not saying they're fully socialist, but I'm saying that compared to like in nation um, uh, in their form of capitalism, Iran, Iran is much more uh, socialist than anything. Social, it's uh, it's a okay. mix. Of yeah, but this isn't an, an this isn't an argument for uh, for ultranationalism or theocracy because if we look at uh, if we look at social democracies across the board, the ones that are doing the best, the ones that have the highest standards of living for the average citizen, for the average worker, for the average woman, for the average gay person, whatever, right? Those are those are uh, governments that have more democratic structures than the U.S. Th those are cases where there's more democracy, uh, participatory and electoral democracy, meaning like more protections on like uh, meaning there's less like bribing going on. It's still going on because it's a capitalist state, so it's inevitable. But more democratic structures correlate with higher standards of living. And if you when you bring up policies like socially democratic policies, like welfare state policies, you're almost admitting that the theocracy and the nationalism isn't what's contributing to the economic growth. Oh, I'm sorry, your mic cut off. Yeah, so when you keep going back to socially democratic policies as an explanation for GDP growth, you're almost admitting that the theocracy and that the suppression of free speech isn't what's helping them. Because if we look across the board with countries that have higher standards of living and countries that have more socially democratic policies, they're all uh, pretty much uniformly across the board more democratic government structures that have less suppression of free speech and more freedom of speech and less suppression by the state. So I, you can't really make the argument that the increase in GDP or the increase of any like good material conditions in Iran are because of the suppression of free speech or because of the theocracy. Okay, yeah. I mean, what I mean, what I was trying to say is that. Uh, 
what I was trying to say is that I say is that you know because of the suppression of freedom of speech, um, the pro the pro Shah, the people who are rise up can't rise up to power and ruin the country again. Yeah, but you have no uh, you have no data on like the geopolitical uh, not geopolitical, but you have no data to suggest that. Uh, more suppression of free speech will lead to higher standards of living. That's not the case across the board. So I don't, I don't understand how you can make this argument from anything other than just no, no, like. All right, I think I think you misheard what I said. A lot of I, I, times that um, I'm saying that uh, I was only I was only really applying this to Iran, and then this became only really applying this for Iran. Yeah, but I don't think you can say it's the case in Iran either. Because if we look at the the material conditions in relation in relation to to democratic structures and less suppression of free speech across the board, uh, more free speech, less suppression by the state, more democratic structures, less theocracy correlates with higher standards of living. So I don't even think you can apply this to Iran. Uh, I believe it's very easy to say that uh, Iran's current state is due to uh, geo its geopolitical position and the material conditions that have led to the rise in GDP. And since you can't uh, point to any correlating factors that we see materially with uh, with policies in relation to free speech, I feel like you can't make this argument uh, anywhere but from a stance of feels. I mean, you haven't been able to substantiate or link uh, a connection between suppression of free speech, even in Iran, with uh, increase in GDP. All right, well... Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that freedom of speech is directly uh, helping Iran's economy, but well, no, no, no. But you said you, you said suppression that, of freedom of speech helped the economy. You you did make that statement. That I said that the Iranian economy. Um. So this is what I was pretty much saying. All right. So you have this group of people who are pro Shah, and um. Uh, they start like putting out all this anti um, Iran government propaganda and then and then uh, and then they start rising to power. They overthrow the Iranian uh, to put back the Shah. Uh, but when the Shah and in let's say and let's say uh, you're right and that the and that the Iranian economy, trust me, it was much lower for the majority of people um, when the Shah was in power. Yeah, this sort of justification you give that the suppression of freedom of speech by the current government is justified because these other bad people won't get in power. This is the case across the board with fascist governments that routinely failed across the board globally, not only in fascist Italy and Nazi Germany, but in uh, fascist governments in uh, Latin America. Yeah, this is this is across the board the justification of suppression of freedom of speech, and it doesn't at all materially correlate with uh, – better material conditions for the average citizen or the nation as a whole. This is just an argument from Thiel's. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying fascism. And I can, and I can link you a video to it. Um, the, but you are advocating um, for fascism. Hitler. You are advocating for fascism. The German economy um, uh, in, in, even though he was uh, he was suppressing freedoms, all those uh, free. Wait, who are you talking actually about? Did bring up. Hold yeah. on, I, I didn't hear you said. Who are you referring to? Uh, Hitler. Hitler did bring up the economy, Germany. It wasn't, an, and he was Hitler able increased to keep the economy private state. production, but in terms of all of the policies, all of the specific privatization, no, that had a negative material impact on the average person. Yes, it didn't because uh, it made a lot more opportunities for. It didn't make a lot of opportunities for people. You. <laughs> the likelihood of being in a concentration camp increased dramatically for the average citizen. The amount of political dissent in Nazi Germany was horrible. And if we, we actually have uh, we actually have a lot of data on authoritarian structures and, I'm and, and, that a, decrease, that, and a decrease I'm in mental health for the, the average whole... citizen. Yes, the, the, that directly negatively impacts uh, 
material conditions for the average citizen. And if we had an example, right, of a Nazi Germany that lasted for a long time, we could easily extrapolate that this has a negative correlation with material conditions from uh, the social conservative policies, the ultranationalist policies, the suppression of dissent. Yeah, we can easily... Uh, we can easily imply from this that if Nazi Germany lasted longer, there would have been a dramatic decrease in material conditions, right? So let's think about this, right? Socially conservative policies decentivize uh, mental health uh, treatment that across the board needs leads to negative material conditions. If you have if you have cases that basically breed trauma, which Nazi Germany definitely did breed trauma for the average citizen, uh, cases of trauma that are untreated highly correlate with uh, higher uh, instances of criminality across the board. So if the material conditions increase the criminality and we can materially show increases the suicidality uh, of gay people and other minorities who are uh, being persecuted and we can across the board show that discrimination uh, dramatically increases the suicide rate and if then if you couple that with how many queer people there are, if the suicide rate is dramatically higher for them, that's negatively going to impact uh, their family members, which most people would likely have a gay family member. If your uh, family member commits suicide, that increases your suicidality. And if you increase the overall uh, negative mental health conditions for generations, that leads to negative uh, generational impact on the whole populace. We, we see this in, a, in America as we have a, a rise in, in mental health crisis. It negatively impacts everyone. All right, yeah, I understand that. And you know what? I actually kind of agree. Wait, then why do you hold these positions? It's that it's you, just... you keep running back on these positions, but how would you agree if, if it's something that you... Maybe for other countries, but... But why is Iran different? You would need data Iran to show... Has... You would need data to show that Iran's conditions make the, make the socially conservative, anti-free speech structure better for the average citizen, but you don't have data to show that. I can't find anything on that. That's the problem. I, oh, yeah, you can't find it because it doesn't exist. Like how did it affect their economy? And and I couldn't find a source that said it affected it in a good way or a bad way. Yeah, okay. Find Here's the thing. If there's no data to show that it had a or any effect in general on the economy, and we already have a vast array of data in multiple fields of study, uh, both on the effects of these policies in specific countries and across the board globally, if we have all this data to, to show that these policies negatively impact a country and you don't have any data to suggest that it in positively impacted Iran, you can't use Iran as an example of it working because you can't show that that's what caused uh, the increase in standards of living. I, and I know this doesn't really count, but I guess I just have to say this in a personal point of view and, you know, what, uh, and, you know, my family, uh, Iran, Iran um, has done much better because of the, because of the government. Find a source yeah, yeah, on but it. You can't, you can't show that it was because of the socially conservative or the theocratic or the nationalist policies that led to that. You're claiming that it's the theocratic, anti-free speech, government suppression of free speech structure that caused an improve in material conditions, but you can't show that. And across the board, that's not the case. What do you think it is? Because because uh, what do you... Probably an increase in socially uh, democratic policies, probably them getting more geopolitical power in the Middle East. That That's probably going to be a po positive impact on them. Um, yeah, probably that. That's an easy... Uh, an easy uh, explanation. Can we agree that uh, that uh, a bit? And this was uh, my my first point. Um, can we agree that thing is the fact that they nationalized their production? Uh, production of what specifically? You said oil. Before, because post nineteen seventy nine, um, the United Kingdom, France, and the USA take control of Iran's oil fields and just use their oil for free. Oh, yeah. No, I, and, I'm in favor and, of nationalization and in other of cases, oil. Yeah, I support nationalization of oil. I, I would support that in the U.S. as well. I'd support oil. that in any state, yeah. All right, so yeah, I'm glad we... Okay, do you have any other, uh, pick out, do you have um, any other like, one... contentions 
or any final memes? That uh, you you definitely changed my mind in some some aspects of uh, of you. Yeah, well, I'm glad. I think, I was, I'm glad so. I, I think me and you can. Yeah. So uh, so thank you for that and. Uh, yeah, thank you. It was a good discussion. The Iran being a more, yeah, so I think um, you know Iran being more oppressive. Maybe it's not the best thing for the economy. Yeah, actually, two last things. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Iran, Iran. It's just that it's just that the reason I'm so against freedom of speech in Iran specifically is because I don't I don't want there to the Shah to rise to power again because the Shah was very flawed and I don't know and I don't know if freedom lubricate um allowing the shah to come back but it's just that it's just that the shah can't shouldn't come back because he was a very he was a very government uh he supported he was very supportive of the west when they were using all their oil and just everything he was a horrible government yeah well sovereignty he brought um, more sovereignty like economically for nations can be a good place i'm not in favor of like more nationalist type like trade policies but yeah in a lot of cases countries that are suffering like economic imperialism that can be better for the system the the thing i would disagree with is that like i don't think when people have more freedom uh to dissent to dissent it shows broader correlation with policies that that increase material conditions for the average person so i feel like if if the average iranian citizen had more say and were able to dissent more i would say that that would correlate with more uh, positive social and economic change, because that seems to be the case across the board. So I feel like if you want like things to be better for the average Iranian, you would need to support their ability to dissent, because then then that makes them able to to change things about Iran and make it better for everyone. You know what I'm saying? I can agree with that. I can. When fear at the end of the day is that um is that Iran Iran has to do everything it can to prevent a Shah from coming and the modern Iran has only experienced two things they've experienced um uh, they've experienced the Shah the imperial the the um con- the more conservative the more strict and authoritarian um uh, mullah or, and I agree with you. It's probably it's most likely not because of the of the mullah being more oppressive. But I, but I, whichever way, whatever he did, I think he did it right for the economy. Yeah. So this was a this is a fun conversation. Uh, see you later in the server. Um. Yeah. But. Uh, so I remember, I remember, uh, you know, testing thing that oh, I can't. The USA should well invade Iran. United States with its allies in the oh, Middle yeah. East could Can I explain Iran that? In a war. Can I explain that? Testing is a huge memer. He does this pretty much anytime he's he's mad at someone. Like there was another case where like uh, the user cringy names was like. Uh, doing some like irish pride memes and he was just shitting on ireland he pretty much just does this huge like merc a good meme as like a just when he doesn't like someone and he wants to just shit on their country just for fun he's a huge memer i don't think he was being serious about that at all no but uh you agreed with him oh yeah no because i I sometimes i sometimes participate in the memes but i said that i said that the u.s probably would beat iran like if if they engage in war because the, the U.S. has the biggest military, I don't support like the U.S. at all. I pretty much want all nation states abolished. But that's a different conversation. I mean, I don't think Iran states will win a war against Iran, but everyone has their um, own opinion, and I'm happy and I'm really happy of where this. And I just have one last question. Um, mm-hmm. what? what can I do to get a higher role? Because I'm tired of, I'm tired of, uh, do something he doesn't like, you know, for example, uh, he, he says something and I disagree with it and I use his own. 
he tends to say like, oh, if you don't shut up or if you don't do this, I'm going to put you in the cage. <laughs> Is there any role where I can't? Well, yeah, they're pretty cruel, honestly. Move further to the left, take more leftist positions, which I feel like you're already pretty much on the road, and it'll probably happen less. Although sometimes, I don't know, the mods are pretty crazy in there. So don't take salt with a grain of salt. I just 